Hello everyone, and this is BioPhoenix here, and today we're going to be doing yet another uh, Games I Wish Got Fan Translated, Part 8. Yeah, it just never ends, huh? So as always, this is just me, like, just blabbering on about a little bit of what I know about some of these Japan-only games that actually look very interesting to me and that I would like to play one day if they ever got translated in some way, shape, or form. And also another thing I bring up often is that, obviously, I don't expect these games to get fan-translated overnight. I do understand that these types of things take a lot of time and patience to do, so don't worry about that. This is just me just showcasing just random-ass games and thinking that, you know, one day, it would be cool to see him be playable, but anyways, I've talked about that a bunch of times, but I have a feeling if I didn't mention it that someone's gonna bring it up, but anyways, I would just get right to the point. So the first game I want to talk about this time is a PS2 game called Seiji no Mikada. So this is an action-adventure game that has the whole uh, takusatsu theme. So pretty much anything like Kamen Rider, Power Rangers, Golden Knight Garo, stuff like that. But the thing that makes this game very different compared to any of those is that the entire game plays out like an entire episode. Like, you actually got, like, a beginning, a middle, and an ending, and then it's, like, episode one, you get credits, and then it goes on to the next episode. And the entire goal is not just so much as to complete the episodes, but it's also you have to do it right, because you actually get ranked with TV ratings. So, yeah, this game is basically like the True Man Show. So that does make things pretty amusing with this game. And also, just from the little bit that I've seen of it, it does seem to be get, like, some pretty crazy ideas, which I'm always up for. Plus, you can actually create your own character, which I do think is pretty awesome. So yeah, this game definitely seems like it has a lot of charm to it. And next up we have is a both Sega Saturn and PS1 game, and that happens to be Black Gunnier. So this is a tactical strategy RPG that uses mechs, kinda like Front Mission. But this one I do think has a really nice art style going for it. In fact, I find that the art style in this one kinda reminds me of Bulk Slash. Now, unfortunately, I don't know much about the story, but the one thing that I do know is that this actually is a series of two games, although there was going to be a third one planned, but it never happened. So I kind of get the feeling that if the second game ever does get translated, I have a feeling it's probably going to end off in a cliffhanger and we'll never know exactly what's going to happen next. Which is a shame, but of course I could be totally wrong on that, I'm just assuming here. But I think it does look like a pretty good one though. And next up, we have a Dreamcast game called Bounty Hunter Sarah. And as you can see here, yes, this game was actually published and developed by Capcom, which is crazy to think. And it's a genre that's pretty different compared to what they normally do. It happens to be a visual novel, but I suppose that Phoenix Wright is probably the closest thing to that, but, you know, this is before that. But it does make me wonder if this game actually inspired some of the stuff for Phoenix Wright, because this game is a detective game after all. So you play as a character named Sarah Fitzgerald, and she is a bounty hunter, and she has to fight crime with a bunch of gangsters that are trying to take over Neo Tokyo. So, it's a pretty cool concept, even though it's not the most original thing ever, but I think the game does look pretty cool, and also does use some uh, live-action parts at certain moments too, which is kind of interesting. But I should also mention that this game does have a sequel, and it's on the PS2, and it's called Critical Bullet 7th Target. Yeah, I can't say much about the sequel, since there really is not a lot of info on it that I can find, but it also does look pretty interesting. But of course, I want to play the first one first, for obvious reasons. And next up, we got a PC-98 game, and that happens to be Gunblaze. Although this game was also released on other platforms like the FM Towns and the Sega Saturn. But no matter which version you're looking at, the game does look really cool. So this is a turn-based RPG that takes place in Old London. And it mostly focuses on using guns, so yeah, there's no, like, magic or anything in this game. And I find that to be pretty unique for an RPG, although I suppose there's also Wild Arms, but this looks slightly different from that too, to some degree. And as you know me, I'm a huge fan of the graphics in this game, I think it looks really awesome with its style and its bright colors. And from the little bit that I know about the story, it also sounds pretty interesting too. So you play as a uh, young detective who finds a girl being assaulted, and after he clears up that situation, it turns out that he actually seen her face on a wanted poster before, and is unsure if he wants to, like, you know, arrest her, or, like, you know, wants to help her out in some way, shape, or form. And things get crazier as it goes on, so yeah, definitely seems pretty cool to me. And next up we have is a PC Engine CD game, and that happens to be... 
the Emblem from Darkness. So, that's not the full name. In fact, I'm actually gonna put the full name right here because I have a feeling I'm gonna butcher the fuck out of it. But this happens to be an action RPG where you get to play as two chicks. Kinda similar to that one I talked about called Bastid. But the one thing that is pretty cool about this one is that you can actually play the game two players at the same time, which is pretty awesome. I don't know if you can do that in Bastid or not, but apparently in this one you definitely can. And I really do like the art in this game, even though I did notice that there is a lot of, like, olive green in it, which I'm kinda like, eh, about. But I'm sure the game's graphics might improve as it goes on, but I do like the character artwork a lot, though. And I did try to play this one to see if it was doable for a video, but unfortunately, it was not, so I'm gonna have to wait on this one. But it does look pretty promising. And next up is another PC-98 game, and this one I have a feeling might actually be playable without knowing Japanese, but it might be hard for someone like me, and that happens to be The Legend of Pong Long Fighter Sunny. So this is a very unique one where that it's pretty much a Monjong RPG. Now that's something you don't see very often. Now the reason why this one could be playable without knowing Japanese is that if you know how to play Mahjong, then well, you'll probably ace this game no problem, but for someone like me who doesn't know how to play it and has always been curious about it, well, yeah, I'm basically fucked on this one. But from the bit that I've seen of this game, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of text in the game, so this one might be a lot easier to do compared to some of these like RPGs and visual novels that I've been talking about. But it just seems like one of these like fun, quirky type of games, which I'm always up for. Plus the artwork looks awesome, as you would expect. But I should also mention that just like a lot of other PC-98 games out there, this one does apparently have some adult content to it, but I don't think it's going to be too bad compared to some other shit that I've seen. But I could be wrong on that, since I've never played it. And next up, we got ourselves another Dreamcast game, and it's also yet another visual novel, and that happens to be... Metal Wolf. Yeah, not to be confused with Metal Wolf Chaos, we got regular ass Metal Wolf. Well, it's still a pretty cool name. So this game was developed by Princess Soft, which is probably the most manliest name for a company ever. And of course, leave it to me to start thinking about them being like a bunch of guys that are like jacked up all the time working there. Wouldn't that be hilarious? Well, moving along, so this is a visual novel that takes place in the future, and I really do love the art style in this game and the character designs, so I actually think they look pretty cool looking. But, aside from that, I'll be honest, I don't really know much about the story, because there really is no, like, simple, basic summary on, like, the, the story. So for all we all know, the story might actually be like a bunch of bullshit, but I just figured I'd talk about it because it did kind of caught my eye. And plus, who the hell else is talking about this game? Absolutely no one. And next up we have is a game that was only released on Windows of all things, and that happens to be Guardian Sword Alpha Era. And all I have to say here is that, holy shit, the graphics in this game are like really amazing for 2D. Not only does it remind me of like a high-res PC-98 game, but there's also a lot of really great animation on the character sprites, and some pretty cool looking backgrounds too. And apparently the game was made in China, but it actually has both a Chinese and a Japanese translation. Unfortunately, I don't know a lot about the story, but it does seem like pretty typical fantasy stuff. But it does look really awesome though. The only thing that is unfortunate is that because it's only released on Windows, I have a feeling that getting this game to work on modern OS's might be like a bit of a bitch, but if there's a way to do it, then I would totally be up for trying it out. And next up we have a PS1 game, and this one has a name that I'm also probably gonna butcher the hell out of, and that happens to be Ningyo no Rakuen. So this is a strategy RPG that has a very unique setting. It's not a fantasy setting, it's not a mech setting, no. Instead, it takes place on a survival island. And what makes it even cooler is that it has a very dark and gritty aesthetic to it. So it's another one that I can add to the list of uh, RPGs with horror settings to them. So knowing all this, yeah, I'm totally interested in this game. I actually think it looks pretty badass. And since I have reviewed a Japan-only tactical RPG once before, there is a chance that I maybe might consider doing this one at some point in time, but probably might not be for a while. Plus, I would prefer to wait to see if there is one in the works. But yeah, definitely a very unique tactical RPG, I will say. And now, as for the final game I'm gonna mention in this video, so this is a game that I actually found out did have a translation, but it's for a certain version, but I figured I'd still talk about it since, you know, it's a pretty obscure game and well, who else is talking about it? And that happens to be Forget Me Not 
impale it. Just take a look at that cover art. Isn't that just a work of art? If anything, if it wasn't for the PS1 logo, it could probably pass off as being like an album cover. So as soon as I saw that picture, I was immediately interested and wanted to know more about this game. And well, like I said, there is a version of this game that is playable in English, and it's on the PC since the game was made in RPG Maker 95. But this PS1 version is actually like an enhanced version where not only does the graphics look a lot better, the music has like CD quality which sounds really good, in fact from the little bit I've listened to it it's pretty great, and plus there's Japanese voice acting which is always cool. But yeah, like I said, the game is playable in English for the Windows version, but I have heard that you had to use like a lot of like weird methods in order to get the game to run which is kind of annoying. But if you really do want to play this game at any means necessary, then there is a way to do it. But I personally would really like to play the PS1 version sometime, given that I really do want those enhancements, and of course I want the game to be easy access to work right. And even though it does seem unlikely that this translation would happen, given that there's already like an English version already there, well, here's the thing you gotta remember, is that there are people out there that were more than willing to be dedicated to translate games like Grandia and uh, Castlevania Cynthia and the Night on the Sega Saturn, which have more than enough versions already in English, so if people can do that, then I don't see why not this. But with all that aside though, since I realize I haven't even really talked about the game yet, so yeah, this is kind of like a, a top-down uh, adventure game, kind of has some horror vibes to it, where it's all about a mystery. And it's all about this girl who lost her eyesight and memories in an accident. And you have to help her out by overcoming these trials, so that's basics what you need to know on that. But yes, it is indeed a very fascinating game nonetheless. So that sums up all the games I'm going to be mentioning in this episode. So were there games in here that I mentioned that you thought looked interesting to you? Or were there some that like you've played before that you know you can tell more about? And what are some other ones that you can mention that I haven't mentioned already? So with that said, thanks for watching, commenting, and have yourselves a great day.